7 million people died each year because of air pollution. Now, to put that in perspective, that is more than the whole population of Singapore. The main pollutants that's causing this is called PM2.5. It stands for particulate matter 2.5. And as its name suggests, it's a particle in the air that has a size of less than 2.5 microns. Now, how small is 2.5 microns? Well, what you could do is uh, pluck a strain of your hair, and PM2.5 is 50 times smaller than the hair that you're holding right now. So it's really small, it's virtually invincible to human eyes, and it can easily enter our lungs into our bloodstream and cause damages in our organs. It can cause heart diseases, respiratory infection, respiratory cancer, and many more. And eventually it will lead to death. Now, PM2.5 comes from many type of sources. It can come from car, motorcycles, factory, uh, power generators, or even simple activities like cooking or smoking cigarettes. Those generate PM2.5. Now, WHO, the World Health Organization, states that 95% of the people in the world still breathe in high level of PM2.5. One of the main reasons why is because people are simply unaware of the level of PM2.5 in their area. And why is that? Well, a single monitoring station, it could cost at least $250,000. And as you can imagine, not a lot of people in a lot of places have access to that. So in our research, what we're trying to do is instead of using those expensive equipment to monitor PM2.5, we use information that we already have, like temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, wind direction, to predict PM2.5. And matter of fact, with our most recent model, which is a neural network model based on MLP algorithms, we could achieve an accuracy of at least 80%. What that means is 8 out of 10 times we could predict PM2.5 accurately. And our goal is to integrate our model with cloud server so that we can make this forecast available to the general public. And we're not talking about one specific place. We're talking about any places that already have this simple weather information so that more people in more places could have access to the PM2.5 forecast. And we can alert them when the level goes too high so that they could you know, take precautionary action. Our hope is with this, we can help reduce the number of casualties caused by PM2.5. Now, this is a small step in a very big problem, but every small step counts.